Him, my I've car. been arrested, man. Is your car open? Which one? The uh, token on This cannot be real life right now with these people. Scary. A little guy running around here, nobody's here. That's real scary. Hey, short stuff. Hi. Hi. Where's mommy? She rang her doorbell and woke her dogs up. And I was like, what the hell is going on? What had all the makings of a peaceful night for residents of a quiet Fort Myers, Florida community took an abruptly strange turn on August 24, 2021. Police have been dispatched to the neighborhood after receiving word of a shocking situation. A little boy has been found wandering the residential area completely alone. Also mind-blowing, however, is the revelation that the individual behind the whole disaster is a widely known TikTok star. Officers arrive on scene with little information to go on and no idea what they're about to encounter. The following footage has never been seen before. Oh, they said they were inside there. Possible, because that front door is wide open. And they just moved in, so. I'm out with them. Drive has an open door. I'll wait for another unit to clear it. They usually have three cars in the driveway. There's one right now. Okay. The little boy provides his name as they await backup. Mm -hmm. One time I asked him where he lived, he pointed to He pointed there? Just once. Okay. I have other officers coming, so um, if you could just hang on to him for yeah, a minute. Just wait by my car, obviously, because yeah. we're going to clear the house to make sure. There might be someone home. Right. And these cars are typical for the driver? Uh, I think, yeah, I've seen that You said they just moved in? Yeah, not too long. Okay, about how long? Uh, How far I didn't see him on the mount. Right. It's possible he came from this house or he's open the mount. Uh, uh, just in case somebody's shot inside. Coming up from behind. Footage of the interior of the home has been redacted for privacy purposes. Mm, that's a car seat. But the home is void of any residents. I keep asking where's mommy and daddy or sister are at. Yeah. She's playing down the road. Down the road. Yeah. 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 He likes he likes Star Wars. He also likes both of us by your room. Officers are desperate to identify the unsupervised child. Younger woman, like off looking, really dark and black, check back hair. I don't know if it's a sister or a mother, because there's two other cars that are each including that one. So there's usually a total three of three cars, cars here? Three cars, including the Pokemon custom car. Who, um, who found the child? Uh, what, uh, I guess another neighbor. I've seen her around before. I was out walking. And that's how I got involved, because she she thought it was one uh, from around here. So she was she rang her doorbell and woke her dogs up. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And I, that's when I called your dispatch on emergency. The man explains that while out for a walk, a woman happened to cross the little boy. However, she expressed that due to the widespread COVID infections, she was afraid to get close to the child and asked the man if he could help the little boy. She was trying to find someone to help her, so that's why I came out and She went on her walk. Probably if I was our supervisor from now. Okay, so who wants them? You want to go for a walk? Yeah. You want to show me where you think your mom is? Okay. All right. Good a concerned neighbor approaches an officer and inquires as to what's going on. Okay, so, uh, do, you, do you happen to know who the kid's parents are? That's the issue. Is found a kid wandering around without his parents. Oh, wow. And there's so, no one there. So we're trying to figure out if anyone knows. Do you have any contact with your neighbors? Or? They just moved in. Probably, uh... I would say a week ago or two weeks ago. So pretty, so pretty, uh, yeah, they put in the for the community. They, they okay, from Colorado. Realtor that just sold them the house. It seems they're finally making some headway. Hey, do you happen to know the owners of that? Marissa Cluche. She's a single mom. 
she not here and the kid was there? Yeah. Police have learned the identity of the homeowner, and it turns out she's actually a celebrity of sorts. Social media influencer Marissa Cloutier, better known as at Digital Princess on TikTok, has amassed over 2 million followers. You know, I thought I heard something a little while ago. It sounded like a kid that was whining or crying. I came outside with nothing, but I didn't. Yeah, I guess he was just walking around, so they're trying to find. Um, do you happen to have a number of a uh, phone number for her still? I do, if you just give me a moment. Okay, yeah, that'd be great, because yeah. I think we'd use to try and get in contact yeah, with her. Yeah, she's only lived here about less than I know, so hold on, let me get up. All get right, up. hold on. Just moments later, the realtor is able to give Marissa's cell phone number to police. Yeah. Do you get her? Yeah, we got in contact with her. She's on the way. We're just waiting for the kid now. Okay. It's kind of scary. A little guy running around here. Nobody's here. Probably. That's real scary. I think he just turned four because she said something about a birthday. I knew he was three. Like I said, I don't know him that well yet. I appreciate it because trying to find a phone number was... Yeah, they, they got. I gave him the number and they got it. That ain't cool. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a kid. He's, he's going to do things like that. You know, unfortunately, especially like around here, like people should be driving cautiously, but you've seen it. So he did cross the road, too. Oh, wow. The officer thanks the realtor for his assistance and continues the investigation. Shortly thereafter, Marissa returns home, though the footage of her arrival has been redacted. The officer visits the man who originally placed the call to alert authorities of the unaccompanied child in order to obtain a statement from him. Sometime this evening, maybe 34 minutes ago now, so, and then my daughter came in the room and said there's someone ringing the doorbell, which I thought was strange. In the distance, I saw a lady uh, that looked like there was a small child trailing her. And it looked like she was trying to get away from him. He explains that he placed the non-emergency call to police at this time. The dispatcher was already aware of the situation. Apparently, the woman who the little boy was trailing had already placed a 911 call, but expressed that she was afraid to get close to the child, as mentioned previously. The man then volunteered to stay with the little boy until police arrived. Um, are you familiar with the child? Have you seen him before? I've never seen him. Can you describe how, like, the child, like, his demeanor and stuff was? Like, he's always was he scared. Crying? No, he, was, like, he wasn't he... scared. He came right to me. He grabbed my hand. And, not surprisingly, the Good Samaritan has a question for the officer. Was she apologetic? Yeah, she was, she was apologetic, but, um... Even excuses? At this, at this point, it's it's not just, like, a few minutes, like, ten minutes. Like, that was... Yeah. She didn't show up a little after 11, and who knows how long he was there by himself right, before yeah, exactly. that. It's a significant period of time, especially for a small child like that. And as if the situation isn't already baffling enough, the story Marissa will provide to officers only makes everything more unbelievable. We return to the scene where Marissa's mother has just arrived. Uh, hello, Mom. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Sergeant Moreau. You can come. Everything is okay. I'm going to explain to you what's going on. Um, so earlier this evening, we get a phone call. There's a small child in the community unattended. Uh, we come out here. We're with the little boy, which is your grandson. Uh, apparently, mom had stepped away to go and get with friends or meet with friends and left him unattended. What? Yes. So this is where we're at. Um, and so he was walking around by himself? Yes, ma'am. We just moved here. Literally. Um... The beginning of August. Okay. Just bought the house. Okay. Okay, hold on. The little boy's grandmother is clearly stunned by what she's just been told. There's my grandson. So he's inside. You can just stand by for a minute. Um, and that's why I had called you out here. Do you have your ID with you or anything? I do. Okay. So that's why we called you out okay. here because we're still in the process of investigating gotcha. everything. But more than likely, okay. she'll be going to jail today. So what? I just, yeah, yeah. That leaving a child unattended is a very serious offense. Oh, I get it. Okay. So, um, yeah, just um, stand by with this officer. Uh, will you be able to take your grandbaby? Because I know she had provided me with a number for you, mm -hmm. with her cousin, and with uh, an, an aunt, I believe, that lives my here? My aunt. It's my sister. She's your sister? Right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, is this something that you ladies can do? Because if not, I, I would have to call the Department of I Children know. and Family. Oh, uh, no. He's coming with me. Okay. I I called you here. That's yeah, why, you know. Thank you. Okay, just stand by for a minute. Yeah. Hang tight with our Officer Bradford. I'm shocked that she did that. I can't believe it. Where's her name? 
I don't know where the nanny is. Does she usually have a nanny? She has a nanny. Yeah, a full-time she, nanny. And yeah. I can't believe she made that decision. That's, that's so not her. Right. It is hard to believe that a mother who has various family members, as well as a full-time nanny at her disposal, would choose to leave her four-year-old child alone at night. I'm so angry right now, but I don't want to see me angry. The little boy's grandmother composes herself and makes her way in to see him. And just as she is about to enter the home, we catch our first glimpse of Marissa, who has just exited the home. Her brief journey out to the end of the driveway can only be described as a walk of shame. Hi. Hi. What you doing, Gun falls hard. Yes, ma'am. What happened? Oh, I think I'm going to the Corbin is going to fail. Oh, okay. You want to hand this off oh. to your phone? Yes. He said, uh, he's talking to her mom. Yeah. Are we good to go on the other end? Uh, what did he say? Huh? What did, what did he say? I thought he already said Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. I like the tie dye Crocs. Thank you. I finally got to go to the nighttime car wash. Him by being car. arrested. Now. And I heard where they're no. coming from. Don't know that yet. Huh? Like the bridge, right? right? That's why the detective's out here, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what, was what was your question? I was just asking if I was getting arrested. No. Oh, we don't know yet. Okay, no. Sorry. It's okay, no. It's okay. <laughs> I thought you were asking about mom or something. I was oh, like, no. I've been out here with mom, so I can probably answer. Just a few awkward moments later, it seems a decision has been made. You want to say goodnight to your son before you go to jail? Yes, ma'am. Okay, come on. Marissa is allowed to say a quick goodbye to her son. Then it's time to resign herself to her fate. I'm sorry you made a mistake. I love you. Just keep walking straight. I'm not going to cuff you in front of where your son might see you. I'm not going to do that. Put your hands together like you're praying. Palm to palm. Palm to palm. Yep. Okay, Is your car open? Oh, which one? The token on it? Yes. Is it okay if not? Where's your ID? I'm going to be in the right hand side. We're not coming out here to fight the guest. Is it okay if an officer goes in there to get it? Uh, can, can, can my mom get it? Yeah, we're in a second after the Yes, A statement from Marissa's mother is then taken. And also present in this interview is going to be Officer Weber's. Okay. Sir. She bought this house on her own. Um, that boy is her, like I said, her nanny also lives in Colorado. Marissa, like, doesn't trust anybody where there's some, but her family, that's it. Nobody takes her son. That's why I'm so shocked that this is, even my sister's like, that is nothing she would choose to do, but apparently she did. I just, I can't believe it. I'm glad he's safe because it's so different here with animals and whatever else is out here. And that's why I was shocked when you guys were telling me why. I'm like, wait a minute, what? He was out by himself and she wasn't here. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, she fought so hard because her ex-husband is not She's a good mom. She really is. This was a stupid decision she made. And I can't believe she even made a decision like that. What? And why she did, I don't know. You know I'm just glad you're safe, and I thank you for that. And um, We thank you for being here. Well, I would never not come. That's my grandson. Sorry. I just can't believe she did that. This is not her. This is so out of character. I'm in shock right now. My sister, too. She's like, this is, like, out of character. I said, I don't get it. That's the last thing I thought of. I'm like, what did she do? Was she speeding in her new car? I, that's all I could think of. But for her to ask me to come here, I was like, what could it be? When to find out it was, he was on the road. He doesn't know this area. 
the magnitude of the situation is undeniable. As disturbing as the idea is, things could have ended much differently. The officer returns to Marissa and informs her of the plan they have arrived at. What's going to happen now is I'm going to take you down to the police station. I'm going to do some paperwork. And then you'll be taken over to Lee County Jail, okay? Okay. Just a few days later, Marissa would publicly respond to the news of her arrest in a TikTok video that was taken down almost as quickly as it was posted. She wrote, Legally, I'm not allowed to say so much regarding it, and I know there's a lot of things that are being posted online that are out of context and are very much untrue, so please do not believe everything you read on the internet. Naturally, her followers had something to say and responded with a plethora of comments, including the following. Bruh, there's literally a police report. She cannot say the internet is lying. This is bone-chilling to think of as a mother. And, ah yes, the out-of-context detailed police report. And indeed, it was a detailed report. From the sounds of it, perhaps Fort Myers Police Department tasked their most talented writer with the assignment of writing up a report. The narrative? Beautiful. It's like Charles Dickens. Oh, you did it? No, she's, no, I'm saying like when she does. Oh. It was within a probable cause statement that Marissa's unbelievable claim as to why she'd left her son unattended was revealed. She'd simply run out of laundry detergent. After putting her child to bed, she allegedly made a quick jaunt to a nearby 7-Eleven to replenish her soap supply. However, her failure to produce a receipt for the purchase, combined with a detergent container in the home that was only half full, contributed to the implausibility of her story. In addition, it was her appearance that really didn't support her account. When she arrived home to a swarm of police and concerned bystanders, she was allegedly wearing a black mini-dress and appeared to be dressed more for going out. According to the police narrative, her attire wasn't conducive to a late-night run to a convenience store. Well, you made a decision that wasn't the best. There was no denying that. After Marissa had been read her Miranda rights, she came clean and admitted that she really hadn't made a quick visit to a 7-Eleven after all. According to the probable cause statement, she put her little boy to bed around 9 p.m., then went to go meet with a friend 11 miles from her home. The officer can't help but attempt to try and make some sense of the situation. Am I understanding this correctly? You have a nanny? Yeah, for earlier in the day, she helped me out with him. And also so that you're aware, the Department of Children and Families is also notified of the event. That's, yes, correct. I guess, yeah, that would be our version of Child Protective, is that stand for Child Protective Services? Oh, yes. Yeah, so DCF, it's DCF in the state of Florida, Department of Children and Families. And what does that mean exactly, that that, that it just means that I'll now be checked up on? Um, they allowed the child to be released into the custody of his grandmother for the time being, so they'll do their follow-up. Again, I don't want to speak to what another agency will do. Um, I, I, don't, I don't do their job, and again, I don't, I don't ever want to misinform or mislead. So they obviously will be reaching out to you and doing, conducting their own investigation. You may be wondering if they're really allowed to take the child if there's another immediate relative willing to take the child in. It varies from state to state. In most cases, the child won't be released to a non-custodial parent by the police, and the issue is resolved either by family services or the courts. So I'm guessing you wouldn't be able to use your hands at the time that my kid's going to be taken away or not? For that, I can't answer. Um, again, I don't, I don't want to speak for another agency. Maybe the seriousness of it all is beginning to set in for Marissa, and perhaps a hint of remorse, too. I'm also, I, I know it doesn't matter anymore, and I, I apologize for lying to you, and I know that it's really down to write to a police officer, because obviously all lies get caught up in the thing like that. Um, and that I should have just called the troop, and that would have been to me. And obviously that does not make sense, but I apologize for lying to you guys. My advice to you in that regard would be just don't put yourself in a situation where you find your, that you need to lie to police officers. It is exceedingly rare to find an example where it's helpful to speak to police. Other than identifying yourself, there usually isn't a benefit to talking to police. Marissa briefly elaborates on the whole unfortunate event. And it was the first time of me ever leaving him there, and he always slept through the night, and so I just got the one time he's leaving, and I know that's still no excuse, and it's still no excuse to use. Kids are also weird. They have, like, that spidey sense. They do. They definitely do. 
the reflection comes to a halt when they arrive at their first destination. 79.0, 79.0, and can you close the east Sallyport gate? Approximately two hours later, as the time is nearing 3 a.m., the officer and Marissa depart for their last destination. Uh, now you're going to go down to the jail. Um, but you should be able to go right in because I have all your paperwork done. So. And keep working so that is such that um, determines... So right now it's showing me you have a bond, uh -huh. but that's still going to be a question you're going to want to ask the deputy. Uh -huh. Marissa was booked into the Lee County Jail, then released without bail around 12 hours later. At the time of her arrest, she was initially charged with child neglect. However, roughly six weeks after the incident, on October 4th of 2021, Lee County dropped the charges against her. It's impossible to say why the charges were dropped without additional documentation. The alleged crime of child neglect seems to have had its elements met. However, there may have been post-arrest negotiations with the DA that led them to drop the charges.